It's September the 17th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the nuclearproctologist.org. And I'm sitting on the boat. And I'm heading back down to Outer Passage and work my way towards Clem 2. I, at the same time, I'll try to get over to the Queen Charlotte's. And this is a very treacherous part of the coastline extremely the ocean is coming straight in through here and the outflows are coming out through here and so this island group is only spot you got to anchor you can't really do it justice I guess there but anyway it's doable now there's a lot in going on and I don't have time to keep up with anything but this is a new headline from e, &E News and Fukushima workers told us about all the deaths happening at the nuclear plant. It's a pretty harrowing to understand really the significance of what is going on. And just to cover some of that other stuff, Fukushima worker had a heart attack back in uh, October 2011. You might hear a noise because I'm sitting on a boat back in Prince Rupert. I spent an extra day I'll head out tomorrow morning. I have problems with my stove, and I still haven't got them quite resolved, but I think I know what the issue is. And so when boats go by, everything is flopping around. It's okay. Just make sure I cover that for a second. 31 year old has a heart attack. Uh, radiation around Fukushima near levels where humans vomit uncontrollably and hair can be stripped from the body. March the 14th. That's uh, number three reactor. I think detonated that day, but yeah, uh, one, two, three, and four, and I'll cover that for you a little bit. Tokyo nuke cloud crisis, nuke cloud. So if a nuke cloud goes over any city, then the city gets contaminated. It doesn't need a nuke cloud every day or for it to linger there. It just needs to go through there and then it'll deposit and cling to the radionuclides. Well, then your cars, your playgrounds, your toys, your sidewalks, and you can't decontaminate even with battery acid. Two high school students in the same school die at once, February 26, 2000. And Japanese discuss personal health problems, strange deaths. Seven people died on this particular shopping street in the Fukushima prefecture. Seven people! Seven! <laughs> Professor workers told us all about Actually, the ambulances were going over 10 times a day to the Fukushima plant that first year. That was reported. There you go. At least 10 times a day. It was November 9, 2011. A journalist, now they're not allowed to report on this stuff anymore because it all gets declared state secrets by the local town councils now who barely tie their own shoelaces to clear things a state secret. And you can go to jail for 10 years. It's, it's a absolute intimidation. Another Fukushima clean, cleanup worker dies and found collapsed after removing radioactive soil. January the 17th. So they were digging up six inches of the topsoil. I'm not sure if that's exactly what he was doing, but uh, for decontamination, according to atomic energy, you're supposed to dig up six feet of topsoil. Uh, birds unable to fly. Uh, there's none out here in British Columbia. I just covered 700 nautical miles in a two and a half day trip. And never seen a single flock of birds. Should be a flock of birds every mile. And I've never seen none. That's uh, extremely disturbing, folks. And so once again, it's just more confirmation. And those inside channels are only half a mile, mile wide. So if the flock of bird was there, I would have seen it. Top Tokyo doctor dealing with nuclear workers demand government step in at Fukushima plant. <laughs> yeah, he finally did. That was uh, January 20, 2012. Now they're saying, okay, we're running out of the homeless. We need to train people so they can last an extra few days. That's all that's really going on there about. That's what they talk about there anyway. It's so always wiggling around. Underage people were employed at a nuclear power plant. Underage. No ID necessary. Don't expect to check. Study in CCM-137 immediately damages the heart and muscles and is not slow acting. Uh, so we had 20,000 excess heart attacks shortly after Fukushima in North America showed up in a study. 
that couldn't be accounted for. Fireman dies after working in the Fukushima. After quake, vomited blood and died of renal failure. Uh, you know, you ingest a particle. So when you get a Beckwell on your Geiger counter, that means there's an atom there, and a lot of them, if you were able to get one on your Geiger counter, and you get a lot on your Geiger counter, so there's a lot of atoms there, so you're still breathing in atoms. If your Geiger counter is beeping and picking up man-made ionized radiation, you're breathing it in, and so is everybody else. Mammals and animals and everything else. 40% of Fukushima visitors showed internal exposure to radiation. Well, they didn't, might not have died yet, but they will, right? Fukushima workers told about all the deaths happening at the Fukushima plant. But 40% of the Fukushima visitors showed internal exposure. That's cancers. That's deaths. Yeah, it might take five or ten years for it to show up. Not likely for those people to show up right away. It's very high loads. Over 1,000 workers, nuclear workers, have internal radiation 10,000 counts a minute. After visiting Fukushima, May 23, 2011. A thousand workers, ten thousand counts a minute. You're a dead man walking. You're a dead man walking. That's murder. That's murder. If I give you a pill at a party and you die a year later, that's murder. They gave these people atoms that are ionized and radiated, and nothing on the planet is acclimated to it, and they will all die. So that's murder. It's time to kill the nuclear industry right now. Do it now. Don't wait any longer. Kill it now. It's disgusting. It's annihilating the entire planet and us and every other species on it. What gives us the right to do something like that? What gives a handful of corporations the right to do what they're doing? Start yelling. After working in the affected areas, four workers died. Oh, yeah, no, we're not going to put that in the articles. Not e and &E News Now's fault. I'm just saying the people that are talking about it, professor of history in East Asian studies, no, he's not going to mention none of this stuff that we're putting here. But that's what he should be using. Look, all of this stuff. Why not? Five Fukushima workers most likely received a fatal dose. Oh, but they weren't typical employees. They were contractors, so they don't count. Yeah? Because that's how it's done. That's how it's done. Like you say, ambulance going there ten times a day to pick their nose, right? They're going there to pick their nose. That's all they're doing. They're not going there for something to do. Besides, uh, they're not going there to pick up bodies or sick people. No, they're going there to pick their nose. They're only there 10 times a day. No big deal. People are mentally ill. They don't wrap their minds around that one. Worker dies while decontaminating Fukushima. While he was decontaminating in Fukushima. And that was October 11th. So all kinds of people have died. Many, many, many people have died. Extreme increased mortality caused by cardiac diseases in Fukushima. Uh, the death rate might give some people, give the creeps to some people. Might! Might! It's happening here, it's happening there, it's happening everywhere else. The number of deaths were up 12.5%. 12,000. 12,500 people. Compared to the same month of the year before. And the number of deaths caused by... Um, what was that number? The number caused by cardiac disease was up 14.6%. Up! Up! CCM 137 attacks the heart muscle right away and it can drop you right on your feet. And you don't need a lot of it. It's just radioactive. See, uh, uh, a Beckwell is equal to flipping over a grain of sand forever, every second. It's traveling at a quarter million miles an hour. And so it annihilates your chromosomes and your DNA forever and your body attacks it, tries to build a tumor around it, a sarcophagus around it. I'm going to get distracted. Fukushima Daiichi worker dies had been preparing cover for Yella Tree. And that's what I mean, but these people, I'm not yelling at anybody, I'm just saying, you know, where some 7,000 workers are engaged working at the IAEA says anyway, claims in Fukushima, we don't see no proof of that. We don't see no proof that there's anybody at the plant at all. They just come out and say this stuff. None of them went down there and actually verified it, none of them allowed near it. No institution on the planet has been in there, only TEPCO. You won't see Harvard and Stanford and MIT and Yale and Berkeley. You won't see those scientists, academics down there. And you won't hear from them either. All you hear from is the oceanographic monkeys, the apologists, the useful idiots for the nuclear industry. But you won't hear from a nuclear scientist come out and do stuff. No, 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 no. they got to put out a marine chemist. Because Woods Hole, 825 scientists can't afford to spare one of their nuclear scientists to talk about Fukushima. 
because he's got to go to cocktail parties and lick some boats to get his next academic study covered. Hospital, 40% of Fukushima visitors showed internal radiation exposure. Dead man walking. So, I'm going to head back down to here. This is 100 nautical miles down the coast. And I'm going to try to run across to the Charlotte's tomorrow when I leave here. And I got everything on board. I just get the kinks out of that stove. And I got, I just leaned over to look and it's still not pumping out the heat, but it's burning. It, and at least burned to it, but it's not rising up. So I won't even, I'll jump conversation here anyway in a second. Isotope ratio of radioactive iodine 129, 131. Um, and so there was 31 times more iodine 129 for every iodine 131 that you heard about. And you heard about a lot of iodines of 131, I can assure you. Let me show you what I mean by that. Fuel ejected jet streams Canada. Let's look at Canada because I like Canada. So Health Canada called 300 times background levels of iodine 131 minute. 300 times. 300 times. Not one. No. Not two. I'm pushing little buttons, right? But 300 times. So 7,500 becquels is what they call background radiation for water. And it's potassium-40. It's homeostasis and innocuous and harmless and benign and it can't hurt you and everything on the planet is acclimated to it. But if that was 7,500 becquels of iodine in your water, you got a cancer for sure or you're going to die shortly after. Because if there's iodine there, there has to be cesium and... Remember, you know, the reactors don't run on iodine. That's a byproduct. They run on uranium plutonium. So if one is there, all the other ones had to be there too. And there's over 2,000 of them. Times 300, I'm just finish up. It's going to be a lower quality video so I can do a longer video and get more data out to people. 2.2 million becquels a second is minute. No, it's not. These are man-made ionized elements that are atoms that are atomic decays. And so to have that many, over 2 million a second, in just that little tiny spot, in the, you know, the size of, of a square meter or something, I'm sure that's all they're talking about. And then equated with background levels of iodine, we should be allowed as Canadians just to hang these people right on the spot because they said that. If Vancouver wants Canadian government held more accountable, so do I. We need a good old-fashioned Nuremberg trial and get rid of every one of these people in Health Canada that lied to us and told the media and not saying, hey, wait a second, if there's 131, 300 times, then there was 10 times more iodine 132, 30 times more iodine 133, 31 times more iodine 129 with a 15 million year half-life. 15 million. And it went through a chain reaction. And they want to lie to you and say anything with a longer half-lives. And a half-life is times 10, by the way. So a 15 million year half-life is 150 million year life that it can give you a cancer or a mammal or a creature. Uh, but 300 times background, so there was an invisible snowstorm come to our country, and Health Canada actually documented that and hid it away, right? Health Canada documented that and hid it away. Canada busted covering up spikes in Fukushima radiation detection on Health Canada. Radiation monitoring network in BC. And so they turned off all the radiation detectors across British Columbia when they found out, when they... And that's what that was about, detection health can. At the same time, they turned off, they detected it, and then they turned off all the monitors. We paid for those monitors. We paid for these people to go out and find it. We gave them the equipment. We gave them the education. We paid for the children's shows. And we, you know, who knows what else, because they're stealing from us all the time. And then when it comes time to do their job, they uh, hit it on us. They went out and done the job so they can get it away themselves and their loved ones, but they didn't tell us or our loved ones. Utter betrayal. And let me find you another headline. You know, that 150-foot boat found its way off B.C., but not radiation, Dana. No, no. No, Dana. No, Dana. Should Canada be concerned about radiation? Of course it should. The jet streams are real. The ocean currents are real. So Canada radiation tests, the tests, showed the iodine in the rainwater. Does rain fall by a liter? No. A hundred times above U.S. drinking water limits. They're talking about potassium-40, which is homeostasis which is good for you. And so they equate that 
with the man-made iodine-131. And it's 100 times more. There's your proof. You don't need a Geiger counter to find out if it's here. There's your proof right friggin' there. What do you want? Simon Fraser University. What do you want? That's not good enough for you to have a dim go and find it. It's not good enough unless you got a Geiger counter and go find it yourself. Something fucking wrong with your head. There's your fucking proof. People, oh, Dana, you can't prove it's here. I don't have to. All of these people proved it's here. I dine 131 in the rainwater at 100 times above U.S. drinking water limit. What the fuck do you think that means? Huh? You freaks out there that are denying it. What do you think that means? You're saying Hell Canada didn't find it. That that's a lie. That that headline's a lie and all the other headlines are a lie and that Simon Fraser is lying. Or Dana, where's the Geiger counter reading? I need to see the Geiger counter reading. Dana, how can I believe it? It's in the fucking headlines for the last four years. Go look it up, you morons. I'm only going to show you what's happening. Yeah, I'm yelling at the trolls out there now. <laughs> Health Canada detected a massive amount of radioactive material. But it's not dear unless Dana got a Geiger counter in his hand and fucking shows you a picture of it. And even then, Dana's probably stupid and don't know what he's doing. But here's your proof right there. That's your fucking proof. What do you want? What do you want? Are you that stupid? It's right in front of you. August the 4th, 2011, but you can't accept it without getting a Geiger counter reading today. Oh, yeah, Dana came through. Oh, I don't only got an uh, eight-day half-life. Dana's long gone. Shut the fuck up. There's 10 times more I done 132. 30 times more I done 133. 31 times more I done 129. 50 million year half-life. And plus, you can't have that without uranium plutonium. And for every cesium, there's 100 times more strontium. 90, that's just as bad as the cesium. The iodine doesn't travel by itself, nothing, it travels with everything else. If you got one, there it is. Is that not enough for you? Oh, I gotta have a Geiger, I'm not gonna believe it unless it sees a Geiger counter. It's the stupidest fucking thing imaginable when I show you thousands of headlines of people that went out and showed it to you. But no, Dana, you can't prove it's here. Of course I can. That's all these headlines, that is the proof. Morons. Yeah, Dana's yelling. Canada suspends mobile radiation measurements around Vancouver, BC until further notice. She choked the shit at them with a rope hanging from a tree. They should be hung from a fucking tree for turning them all off. Whoever these pricks were should be hung from a tree. I'm not going to apologize to anybody for what I'm saying. That's what should happen to them. This, we paid for all that and he turned it all off on us. March 22nd, March 24th, March 25th. March 31st, March 22nd. What the fuck is wrong with these people? We paid for them to leave it on. Not turn it off. But no, Dana. Hot particles bombard at the west coast of Canada. But if I don't got a Geiger counter or a picture of a hot particle, it doesn't exist. It's the stupidest argument imaginable. You got headline after headline after headline after headline after headline. All fucking day long. Iodine 131 spiked. What about the 132, the 133? The 129. What about the plutonium and the uranium that the actual the reactors actually run on? Uh -huh. uh. Okay. Just to coop the gras. Probably never even get this one uploaded. Shut all this shit down. Hang on. Long videos. Fukushima short. Just get everybody on the right page. They had a massive friggin' earthquake that would have knocked your house down, no matter how good you built it. They had a 500 mile tsunami, took out all the infrastructure and the ability to deal with us. The yeah, nuclear power plant was updated by a tidal fucking wave that ripped up the country and detonated the nuclear power plants and went in 100% meltdown. That's three times the size of Chernobyl. That's three, that's 100% meltdown. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. This was used in MOX fuel. All of these reactors had enriched fuel into it. They only admit the units we have in the MOX, but they all, uh, we actually know that, and we got the data on that, and we got the uh, emails, a million emails, and we got all the headlines and the studies showing that. This is Unit 2, extraordinary, 100% meltdown, three times worse than Chernobyl minimum. It's three times the size, Chernobyl 30% meltdown. This is right on the friggin' ocean. This was MOX fuel. The reactor is missing. There's no fuel pull. There's no reactor. It's missing. But it's not in the models. No. Why put that shit in the models? So all the models... Let me come back here. I'm almost finished. 
all the models are only based upon single release from a single unit one reactor. All the models are based upon a single release. Come on, click, click. Too much clicking. My mouse is moving, but it won't let me click. And it's not grabbing. Uh, I don't know. I got too much open, I suppose. Who knows? Maybe sometimes it'll do that. There you go. I got it. So this is based upon a single release from a single reactor at Fukushima. It doesn't include that reactor or that reactor. It only includes number one reactor, and it doesn't include number four reactor. Does that look like it? It's it had a little issue. No, that was annihilated. That's unit four. See it up to unit four. The building was completely and utterly destroyed, but it's not in that model. That model only includes a short release from unit one from this reactor here for just a couple of days. It doesn't include the ongoing releases. It doesn't include anything outside of just a couple of uh, radioactive isotopes. But it, do it doesn't include uranium. It doesn't include plutonium. It only includes the, the byproduct, the iodine and cesium, just two of the elements. And they have many daughters elements on top of that. So this stuff came over, if it was just a single plume and went into the upper troposphere, and it did, it would take 10 years for it to rain out, but it doesn't stop coming out of there. It ain't going to stop coming out of there. And it has annihilated the west coast of British Columbia, and that's what I'm doing on the Expedition for Life. And you can find more about that at the nuclearproctologist.org. And I'm taking a thousand, up to a thousand pictures a day when I can get out there. It's winter time. It's mad conditions. It's just nuts. And I really, you know... I don't know how I do it every day. I don't know. I couldn't even do it today. I never had the heat. No heat last night. I had to get that stove up and running. These reactors, and I'm on a boat here, so there's a lot of noise, and the video is almost over. And, but this is important that you understand that they blew up, and they threw the rods everywhere, right? You know, where do you think that building went when it blew up? It threw rods everywhere, and so the homeless, when they walk past those rods, two weeks later will die, will drop dead, their organs will melt in their bodies. If you had a rod now in a theater, you'd kill everybody in that theater in less than half an hour. But you can do that every half an hour, just a pound of it. The, uh, you know, the, the size of a mug, say for instance, of a drinking coffee mug, is enough to kill all the people on the planet if you can march them into that room every half an hour. You will kill those people, ultimately, every single one of them, in about a half an hour for, say, 200 people in a room. So you can kill everybody on the planet 200 at a time with a pound of this stuff, and it blew all over the, the site. And it did. The rods were pellets, more hideous, because they can travel. You know how a slingshot works. You put a rock in it, won't go very far. Put a pellet into it, and it'll fly 10 times the distance. But anyway, that's Unit 5. That wasn't in cold shutdown, even though they want to tell you that. And that had lots and lots of issues. And that's Unit 6, and they don't tell you much about that, but that, that was not in cold shutdown like they claimed. Um, the salt water, for the first 40 days, created these sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. And they were, a, this is a sulfur buckyball, and they knew about this in the 40s and the 50s during uh, ocean testing. The sulfur ingested radioactive particles inside of these uh, little, they're like little nuclear engines. So a particle, an atom will get inside there with the isotope in it, in the atom itself, and that becomes a nuclear engine. And, you, and nothing on this planet has ever dealt with these elements. They're not created by the sun. You won't find them on the moon. And, you know, they tore off the top of number four. They left two stories there, and the fuel pools were on the fifth story. So there's no fuel pools there. This is unit 40. It builds a, a structure up and across it, but it doesn't touch the building. It's not supporting the building. And it doesn't brace the building or anything like that. And the buildings, that might have fallen by now. We'll never know because it's illegal to report on anything from Fukushima. But all the media showed you this pool here. And they claimed that that pool and that roof, look how beautiful that is, is inside the building on the right. That this building to the left, the roof and the ceiling, is inside the one on your right. See that destruction there? They claimed the roof and all the inside. But nobody can get into that building. Nobody can get into this building, but yet here they are shown saying they're unloading the fuel from the building. But nobody can get in the building. Nobody can get into Chernobyl. E equals MC squared. See, that's the lie. 
they, they equate the sun. What the sun does is create the elements. What we do is destroy the elements, create our own elements that nothing on this planet has ever encountered before. And so it kills it, kills everything on the planet. They equate it with potatoes. They say potatoes are the most radiated food on the planet. On the planet. But that's potassium-40. That's harmless. Whoever says that needs a shot in the mouth right away. They need to be called out, in other words. I'm not saying physically give them a shot in the mouth. I'm sick of their lies. And I'm taking it no more. And they say, look, you know, it's like a banana. You get more radiation from a banana than you will from Fukushima or any other nuclear accident on the planet. But that's a different... If I eat a banana with 12 becquerels potassium-40, I off-gas 12 becquerels potassium-40 because it's homeostasis. That's the way the body treats it. But if it's got a radioactive atom in there, I'll get a cancer in five or ten years. And so whoever says it's like a banana, you have to disregard everything they've ever said and will ever say. You have to throw them away and you have to call them out for it too. You have to call them out because if you don't, nobody will. You don't do it. You have to be the person who do it. And it might seem like a daunting task, but it's not. Just say the words that they're a liar because a banana got nothing to do with it. So stop, please stop lying. That's all you got to say. You can be polite, but you don't have to be an asshole like me. And Lord, we know how Dana can be an asshole. And that's because I'm dealing with lawyers who are killing people. I'm dealing with murderers. Not lawyers, murderers. People that tell you it's like a banana is a murderer. That's a murderer. They're the most disgusting thing imaginable. They are a hideous creature. You wouldn't want to live in the same community as someone that would say that and knows better. Anybody with an education knows better. That it's not like a fucking banana. That's what I would tell them. It's not like the radiation in your drinking water that is harmless. Your drinking water is not going to mutate a, fl a fruit fly. But the radiation from Japan will every single time. The atoms from these rocks are innocuous. They're harmless. You can sit on that all day and you're not going to get rectal cancer. But if you sit on a depleted uranium munition, you will get a rectal cancer. I don't know how I got down that road, but that's actual fact. And there's studies showing that how the military, the people in the tanks, the lower ranking ones that sit on the munition itself ended up with rectal cancers in studies. A large percentage of them did that had that particular job. And they deserve it. Shooting dirty bombs in other people's community because that's what a munition is. It's a dirty bomb you shoot in someone's community. They say radiation like walking in the sunshine. Whoever says that is a lion sack of shit. It's the scum of the earth. It's the scum of the earth. You are not. Sunshine doesn't mutate fruit flies. Sunshine's not going to give you the, the radiation eye noise cancers. You get skin burn or something like that, but it's not going to give you a big fucking tumor. And he says, like a dental x-ray. No, it's not. A dental x-ray, you go and get an x-ray, you turn it off. You ingest a radioactive atom, and you get an x-ray every moment of your life, every second of your life, 1,440 minutes a day, 60 times a minute, till the end of time. See? So it's nothing like an x-ray, because an x-ray, an x you turn it on, then you turn it off right away. Job well done. You're not ingesting an atom that your body's going to attack forever with white blood cells. They say it's like sunshine, but a sunshine is not... An atom. Sunshine is just a radiant element, a radiant heat. And so we're talking about ionized atoms from a chain reaction, not about sunshine, which everything on the planet, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the sun is God. Well, sun and water is God. Without sun and water, none of us or anything else can exist on this planet with intelligence whatsoever. Not that we got any. And so anybody who says it like that is an outrageous lawyer and needs to be called out and needs to be humiliated and needs to be prosecuted and should be hanging from a tree because they're smart enough to know the difference and they tell you to lie to make money and so that's a murderer. Anybody tells you that is an actual murderer and you have to disregard them forever. They put that in the equation. When you get on an airplane, you fly on an airplane, if you find radiation, it's man-made and if you find it on your garter counter, that means you just ingested an atom. Because you can't find one on a garter counter without ingesting one, too. It's not like there's just one floating around here. Garter counter finds it all the time. Yeah? Just kidding you. But anyway, he's finding man-made ionized elements. Your garter counter is not going to pick up bananas or potato chips or walking in sunshine or drinking water, radiation, potassium-40, because that's not what a garter counter does. The garter counter is not going to pick up the radiation because you're a little bit higher in the sky of the sun. No. It's picking up man-made stuff. Your Geiger counter is only designed to pick up ionized radiated elements and particles and atoms, right? 
And the, the big law, of course, is that everything you eat got radiation in it, but that's potassium-40. That's not going to run a chain reactor. The terrorists are not going to gather up potassium-40 and make a dirty fucking bomb. Why do you think you have uh, terrorist laws anyway? Because if you could, bananas were dangerous and food and drinks and rocks were dangerous, anybody can cook up a dirty bomb, right? I mean, that's all the military uses is dirty bombs, but just to end it all, the ocean currents are real. They're very, very real. They're actually real. Yeah, I know. Go figure, eh? The ocean currents are friggin' real. And here's what the ocean currents, based upon a six-year release, looks like. And just from two elements, a single release from a single number one reactor I was showing you earlier. And this doesn't include the 2,000 other long-lived elements. It doesn't include the plutonium or the uranium. It only includes iodine-131. It doesn't include the 132, 133. 134s, the 129s. It doesn't include any of the cesiums, the strontium. It only includes, I'm sorry, it does include the cesium. It doesn't include the plutonium, uranium, which is what the reactors are made of. And it only includes a couple of their weakling byproducts, uh, brothers that are made as a byproduct of the chain reaction itself. Uh, the fracture of the rods is, is the same nature of the 137. And so this model is not based upon all the other reactors, yeah? See, that's the problem. It's not based upon the reactors. No. I got too much of my plate here now, don't I? So it's not based upon that. It's not based upon the releases into the ocean, or not based upon all the reactors. And the ongoing release is just a couple of days releases from a single reactor, the unit one. It doesn't include two, three, and four. It doesn't include the spent fuel pools that were sitting on the roof of those reactors. And once again, you really got to realize that the jet streams are actual real. Canada went up, and here's Canada. They found an invisible snowstorm coming through. This was only for 18 hours, but the snowstorm never stopped coming out of Fukushima. It just never stopped coming out of Fukushima. And that's something we all know. Because when you look at this model, that's only based upon two elements from a single release, from a single reactor over a couple of days, and not all the reactors, not the inventories, not the fuel pools, full of cores that are missing, that melted down, caught fire, atomized, and aerosoled. Yeah. And so all that on the west side of the Rocky Mountains would have washed back towards the Pacific coastline, eradicated everything on the coastline. And when we went and looked, sure enough, it was all eradicated. But it's even worse up north where there's literally nothing left in the low tide zones and the tidal pool in the nursery of the ocean itself. So the Fukushima Expedition for Life is alive and kicking and running strong. I've taken a lot of beatings. I've done a lot of go for the last uh, 10 weeks. Hopefully in the next two months this will be finished up. And I'll get a break for a bit and head up to the Northwest Territory in the spring when the ice finally breaks down there. So I probably won't get out of, uh, I'll get a month home by the looks of it. If the weather holds, I can get back out repeatedly over the next couple of months. It looks that way. Um, I just want to re remind you that, you know, we have to do something. And we get 4,300 peer-reviewed academic studies published every day in North America. 4,300 peer review academic studies published on junk or to our universities and our institutions, stuff that we paid for, we own the buildings and a handful of publishing houses owns the copyrights to all the studies. That has to change because there's no way forward unless we have an open and free planet and that this information is, being, is available for researchers to shift through to come up with solutions and that we have to kill the nuclear industry. It, it's gone. It has to go. And it has to go now. It has to begin right now going in order to have some kind of future. The longer we wait, the more impossible it becomes. The more difficult it becomes only for a handful of the elite to uh, have some kind of a future in a protected environment. That is not to be our legacy. Our legacy is that we took back this planet and we headed in the right direction for the future Instead of being maniacal, we are loving and caring, and we tried our best, and we apologize to the victims of what our governments have done. As a civilization, we apologize to all you people that will die and your loved ones who will liquidate their assets 
trying to stay alive for a bit longer because the people that we had in charge, as we look back, you know, we eradicate them from our history, but we always remember that it was our fault that we didn't watch them, we didn't hold them accountable, and that when we finally took back our planet and our countries, the damage was done, and we had a way forward. But that was the changing point, I think, is what we're looking at. So what I'm trying to say is that this is the changing point of evolution. It's time to throw off the shackles of the rich and the, and the elite and the misbegotten and you know, the good old boys club, it's time to throw all of them under the bus permanently. It's time to eradicate them from our history books. It's time to eradicate our history books and start again and apologize to this planet for what we have done and what we have allowed to happen for the sake of TV and, and comforts of their home where we, we dropped the ball, we didn't watch our government hold it accountable is what I'm saying. It's our, it's our fault that this happened we do, don't hold them accountable and that we buy into the law. You know, 10,000 Taliban, we killed uh, 2 million people. How can you justify 10,000 people to go kill 2 million? Do you think that 10,000 Taliban would kill 2 million? No. Do you think they would have created the 5 million orphans? No. Do you think the Taliban would have wrecked two countries, the entire infrastructure, uh, you know, like Afghanistan, 28, or Iraq, 28 million people, Every bit of their infrastructure and their patents and their pensions and their let titles are all gone for the sake of getting our hands on 10,000 Taliban. And everybody supported that. At the same time, you had 22 veterans committing suicide every day. That's 80,000 in a decade. Dead soldiers, confirmed dead from suicide, to get 10,000 Taliban. And you're looking at 290,000 rapes, 29,000 rapes a year to get the same 10,000 Taliban. You go out and raped your own 290,000 times to get 10,000 bad guys, and you never prosecuted the 290,000 rapes. In fact, you, you, you dishonorably discharged the majority of them because they had said they were victims. So what kind of society are we right now? It's, it's just a stupid society, but we, we are going to change that. The way forward is without the shackles that we have on us now, but we, you know, this awakening that's coming, everything I'm saying is going to be done by people who will never even hear my voice, will, will lash out at this entire system. I'm not saying this is what the hounds are going to do, I'm saying this is what the planet is going to do to these people. That's a fact. Hugs for everybody. My utmost respect. Please keep supporting me. I'm not able to keep up with it all, but we are. I'm good to run for another week and a half, two weeks on um, what we uh, raised the last time. And, you know, if I got to, I will make video after video, video after video to raise enough money to finish this trip off because it's so important. I can't say to you or anybody else that there's no muscles or life off Klim 2 because I haven't made it there off that coastline. I went down there, but I took a vacation for seven days after uh, nine weeks on the ocean. I just, it was too rough to get on that coastline, so I, I covered seven, almost 700 nautical miles of inside passages looking for flocks of birds, and there is none. I can't tell you that Bella Bella has no muscles, because I haven't went off that coastline yet, and so we got to keep going to finish off the little bit of coastline that's left, so that we can say that with authority, and so that we know that, and so that the people that are dear will know, you know. I think we're doing one of the most important things that need to be done, and I'm glad I'm not doing it by myself, even though I guess I am. I'm not. I don't feel I am. I feel I have your support, and I don't feel that way. I know that. That's why I'm able to do the things I do, because I know when it comes to the crunch, you guys will put your back, um, you will put your back to it. Hugs for everybody. Don't think for a second that they're going to get the opera on us because they're not. The truth is here. We're going to get the job done and then we're going to have a debate. Take care, folks.